Well, hello everybody. It has been a hot second since I have recorded any of my uh, drawing process. Actually, it's been over two years. Uh, <laughs> kind of crazy. I've been drawing the entire time, but just haven't posted any on YouTube. I've done a lot of posting on Instagram under JMGA Artist. And then my Facebook page, my Facebook business page, is JMGA Portrait Artist. So um, I've got a really good friend who um, has started posting her videos online and I love it. I love it, love it because I can always learn from a fellow artist. And since I've had several people say, oh, I can't draw. Yes, you can, you can draw. Um, you just have to know the techniques, the proper techniques. So. Um, what I'm working on now, I've already started it, obviously you can tell. This is a brown hair. It's taken, this is the um, reference photo. It is from Sue Cross Wildlife. That's her Instagram handle. Found her on Instagram. She's an amazing photographer over in the UK. And she captures the cutest images of bunnies and birds and oh my goodness owls what else does she have you name it she does wildlife photos over there and i just i love this little bunny's expression look how fun but then look he has got he's shaking water off of his fur and she calls these wet hair days isn't that adorable so anyway sue cross wildlife on instagram go check out her Instagram feed. It is amazing. And she welcomes anyone that wants to draw to use her photos for reference. The only thing she asks is that you give her credit, which I gladly give her credit and want to push more people to her work because it's amazing. So I'm doing this one. Um, I had traced this off. Uh, I have learned, I think if you saw my last video, which I think there's maybe one or two views, so I doubt you've seen it because, you know, come on. I didn't promote it. Um, you know, I'm a beginner. Like a lot of people, I've only been drawing uh, for the last three years since I retired as a graphic artist. But um, I, d I do, what I do now is I'll do tracings, which you can see a little bit. If I'll zoom in just a little bit. What I've done is I've traced just the, the certain outlines of the, the photos so I can get thing in realistic proportions. There's not a lot there. It's just a hint of the edges. And how I do that is I use carbon paper. It's graphite, I guess it's carbon. I, it, it's erasable if you get it on too heavy, but I lightly put a piece of just regular carbon paper under tape it down lightly, and then I just go over it with, um, you can do it with a light pencil, you can do it with any sort of, let's see, what is this thing? This is, I think it's supposed to be like a woodworking tool or something, but see how it's got that little point or that little ball on the end? And I just, I would go around the edges and wherever I press is where it leaves behind a little bit of um, a, a carbon mark, I guess. It's not really graphite. I guess it's carbon, but maybe they are graphite. I have no clue, but they're erasable. And then I'll go in and I will further sketch out the places that I want to further define, but at least it gives me my proper um, proportional measurements instead of actually going in and measuring. I think the last video I shared that I would color the back of my image with um, graphite pencil and then press down on certain points and then sketch. Well, I've since learned by watching other YouTubers, um, by following people on Patreon, by um, just talking with fellow artists that a lot of people do this tracing situation. And I've even got this really cool, um, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So this um, is a light table that my husband actually found for me on Amazon. And it is really cool too. Um, you can actually um, 
it will light up and it gets, this, it doesn't work with this paper because this is a very thick uh, mixed media paper. But if for a thinner paper, stuff shows through and you can actually trace using the lighting table, if that's an option too. Um, I can put a link to this particular one um, in the description so you can see you know what I'm using. Um, I just keep it on my drawing board and actually I'm just drawing on top of it right now. I'm not using it as a light table. I'll turn it off. Um, but there are so many ways to get your reference photo onto your um, your board, your paper. You can um, you can actually freehand sketch it. But if you want to spend most of your time actually working with the values and making the piece your own, there's absolutely nothing wrong with tracing it, tracing the outlines, and then coming back in later to fill in all the details. Um, a lot of artists do it. A lot of artists that you see online are doing this. It doesn't make you less of an artist at all. And I, I highly recommend taking drawing classes and um, practicing your sketching and drawing skills. I, that's essential, but it's so easy to get discouraged by getting so fixated on the details that you can't even get into the actual really cool fun of drawing. So that's, I actually sketched this in a while back. And then one of the last images I did from Sue, um, it was a gold crest bird. And I didn't like, if you go to my Instagram feed, you'll see that post. Um, I was trying to put the background in. I didn't like the background. So I just put him on his own two feet. I researched how to, um, or what a gold crest claws feet would look like. I added feet and he just, it just, I loved how it turned out. So when I looked at this one, I was like, you know what? I'd already traced it on this tan paper, fully intending to put in the green background with the splashes on top. But then I thought, oh, I wanna isolate him if I isolate him, it's just going to be this bunny on this paper that is really the same, almost the same tones as the highlights in the image. Oh, man. And then I thought, wait a minute. Why don't I make this like a duotone image? Like a, a, it's a duotone is a, a print term for uh, like two different tones of color in the same image. Everything's limited down to these two different tones. But how fun would it be to actually treat my color pencil like a graphite pencil where you're just um, making the differences in di di uh, darks and lights by the softness or the hardness of the lead and the layers that you choose. So I thought, and then I could even add, and I, st I haven't decided for sure, but there is a little bit of black. I could come in and put black in these places to actually deepen it up which I might do. And then of course, down here in his tummy, putting in white, but I found online and I looked at Sue Cross's photos. I looked on Shutterstock. I looked everywhere to see what would this bunny's feet look like. And so I kind of gave him a three quarter stance where one paw sketched that in. And then the other paws kind of to the, you know, well, kind of at a, what would that be? Not 90 degrees, maybe 30 degrees to the right. And I thought that's cute because he's bracing himself. He's actually shaking the water off his fur. And my plan is to draw this all in and then using white, probably a Caran d'Ache white uh, with a little bit of blue. Cause if you look at this, there's blue in that water. Um, and, and trying to get those uh, water droplets that are shining off of him. I could even use a gel pen. I will, I have used gel pens before to do highlights and that could work too. We'll see what happens when we get there. But I, I've already started on him and decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a video. If it works, great. Um, you can watch it or not watch it. It's up to you, but I'm just, I'm gonna draw anyway. Might as well use. Might as well make a video and put it on my YouTube channel. Maybe there's someone else who could learn. Um, like I learned from my friends and from other artists that post online. So the, the 
pencil I'm using is a Faber-Castell. It is a uh, Kaput Mortem Violet, number 263. Um, it's a Polychromos, Faber-Castell Polychromos. I really like these uh, pencils. They're a little harder than the um, Prismacolor. I love Prismacolor too. Um, and I love Caran d'Ache. Caran d'Ache Luminous are amazing. But for if I'm doing fur or I'm doing something where there's going to be a lot of drawing and I don't want to sharpen it every three seconds, these hold a point amazing. They're, they're wonderful with holding a point. So, um, and it's very important when you're doing some detail to always have that fine point. So that's what I am using. That's the only color I've used so far. And I think I'm going to try to lay that all in. Because his tummy is white, that's where I'm thinking I'm going to have to come back in. Maybe and use a Caran d'Ache white or Polychromos white. We'll see. We'll see where what happens when we go in there, when I get to that point. He also has a little... Uh, place here you know I think that's his little private place there but I'm going to try to not focus in on that as much I'll probably darken it just a little bit with shadows but you know I don't want that to be the focus I want his little shaking head and um the the fur motion here to be the focus and these little water droplets falling around and it might be kind of fun here at the bottom to have a few water droplets just sitting here, you know, like he's shaken and he's sitting on a table and, you know, he's left a mess for somebody to clean up, which I can totally see. Anyway, um, so what I've been doing is I've been laying in some basic color and as I start drawing, I'm really hoping, I was kind of watching this before after I got my camera set up I am hoping this doesn't shake too much and like drive you all crazy because my camera is shaking, but I don't know how else to, to draw without it shaking because it's sitting, my camera is sitting on a bracket on my table and no matter what I do when I draw, my whole table shakes. I'm not a crazy drawer, but so we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I've started drawing in some, um, big areas, the idea of when you're drawing an, an animal, um, a person, you have to kind of forget that you're drawing an animal, a person. You're just drawing shapes. You're just looking at clumps of fur. You're looking at values of light and dark. And that's what you're concentrating on. You're not concentrating on oh, it's this fine little hair here, oh, I've got four hairs here, I've got a big shadow right there, how do I get that in there? You're just looking at shapes. Um, and you're drawing in shapes. So I'm gonna to start to draw in shapes, but the shape I'm drawing in right now, see, I'm seeing, see how that is separated right there? So that's gonna be a little lighter in there and then a little darker in there. I'm just gonna start We've already got some dark and dark shape here, lighter, darker. So I'm gonna work on that, getting all of that in, like I did on the other side. And don't worry right now about getting exact fur where it's supposed to be, because you know what? You're not gonna be able to get all the fur in exactly the spot that it's supposed to be in. <laughs> You're just not. This, and it's okay, you just have to understand the lighter and the darker areas and how when light hits fur, it it's lighter and the darker fur in the bottom doesn't get as much light so it's darker so that is pushed back into the picture. And if you just concentrate on the lights and the darks and how they play off each other and understand that if there's a light, there's a dark next to it, pretty soon it's going to start looking like real fur, even if it's not, not every hair is in the exact same place. That took me so long to understand and to let go of because, oh my gosh, 
I am such a, I want to be, I want it to be real. You know, I want it to be a real drawing. Boy, that's really bouncing. I apologize. I just don't know what to do about that. I'll have to ask my drawing friends, how do they do this so it doesn't bounce? Shock absorbers for my phone. Um, I wanted everything to be perfect, right? I wanted everything to be, well, that's not the, how it really looks. And I would work and overwork certain areas just saying, it's not exactly what the photo's like. And finally, after watching several different people and doing several of these drawings and realizing it doesn't matter if it's exact, it just has to make sense for what we see. One thing, too, to always remember when you're drawing in fur, even if it's just a base layer, even if it's just an under layer that you know you're going to come back on top with other layers to give it more dimension, always draw in the direction that the fur is going. You notice I'm drawing his fur is going out. His fur, you see how his fur is going this way? That's the direction I'm going to draw in. Um... And as I layer and do that, that will also help give it more depth so it'll look more realistic. I would not come in and draw this way right now, even though maybe that's easier. I wouldn't do it because that's not the way his fur is going. So always draw in the direction of his fur, of the fur that goes for hair. If you're drawing someone with hair, Always draw in the direction of the fur. So I didn't really start drawing. I was a graphic artist for, goodness, 28 years. Seems like forever. That's my background. I had to take art classes in school. I had to take drawing classes because I, I went to school back and I graduated in 84 people. Oh my goodness. Seems like forever ago. I graduated in 84. But I had to take drawing classes. Um, that was before computer graphics, you guys. And I was going to be a commercial artist. I have, I have a degree in advertising design and commercial art. An associate's degree. But... I just did not have the patience for drawing back then. It, it was like, oh no, what? You, I have to what? Oh, that's going to take forever. I wanted, and I wanted a, a, um, I wanted a career where I thought I could make money. I didn't think I could make money being a fine artist. I mean, come on. Um, I enjoyed it, but I just didn't have the patience to stick with it. So I went into commercial art, got a job as a paste-up artist um, at a local stereo company. <laughs> um, did that, made ads, you know, designed ads for them for years, worked at a typesetting house, learned a little bit more about uh, typesetting, and... Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I loved it, actually. It was awesome. Went into business with a friend of mine from school. Um, we actually worked with an automotive company for years um, doing their uh, flyers for their automotive tools. That's where I got a lot of my experience. Um, and I was doing, I learned, we actually taught ourselves, because by this time, was computer design and we taught ourselves by going to workshops, reading manuals, how to use all of these computer programs. And I've, I've used them all. Aldous PageMaker, um, Quark, and lately InDesign. I did, I did the whole creative suite. Because that's what you used if you're being graphic. If you're a graphic designer, you use the creative suite. So that's what I used up until not too long ago. Now I'm 
I'm a creative sweet rebel. I don't use that anymore. I just don't use it enough to, to um, justify the cost. It is very expensive. If you're making money regularly and you're running a business like I did for several years, ran my own graphic design business, yeah, that made sense, but not anymore. It does not make sense for me anymore. <laughs> my husband just got home from the store. I had to warn him I'm doing a YouTube video so that uh, he didn't come in and start talking to me. We'll see if he remembers. I will probably do this in several parts. I don't know how long anybody has just to sit and watch a video. I would hope if you want to get on YouTube or on, excuse me, on Instagram and find Sue Cross's page. See if you can find this adorable bunny in her feed. Print it out. Try your hand at it, guys. I mean, it's so cute. She just has the animals have the cutest expressions. It's adorable. Absolutely adorable. And I learned that when I draw, I do I do a lot of memorial portraits for people that animals have passed. I just have a huge soft spot in my heart for um Dogs, cats, especially dogs. I'm a big dog person, but um, anyway, I want the when I agree to do a portrait for someone, I try to find a really good photo with good contrast. I don't just use any old photo that people give me because they don't understand, always understand the importance of light and contrast and how that really makes a difference in the pictures that you draw from. Make yourself a whole lot of crazy if you're trying to draw from a bad picture. <clears throat> so um, I try to find pictures that have cute expressions that, that evoke emotion. Um, makes people want to just look at it and smile. Or go, oh, it's so cute. Now this, by all means, I'm, I'm going back up here because I see some other things. This is not finished by all means. This is really just the first layer. And I have a couple of options once I get things in place. I have a couple of options of blending these together to put on more layers. I can burnish it down by just pressing harder. I can use a, uh, a blending stick to kind of smooth things out. Um, there's, they come in several different sizes, these little blending sticks. They're kind of cool. Um, if you, let's see. I know Karen Dash has them. So does Prismacolor. I really like Prismacolor's Colorless Blender. It works with any pencil that you use. Gosh, let me see if I can get this so you can read it. It's a PC 1077. It's a colorless blender. And this, whatever is this on this tip, it, uh, it just rubs the stuff together. It just rubs the colors together um, and makes them smoother, softer which I'm not gonna do it quite yet, but it can also make them darker and define it. And another thing I use to blend it, and you can do that on any paper, right? And with almost any pencil. I know um, Karen Dash has their own blenders. In If you buy the set of Karen Dash, they'll have their own blenders. Um, another thing I can use, and I can use it on this paper too. This is the Gamsol solvent that you can actually dip a Q-tip in and um, don't put a lot on there. Dip a Q-tip in and then softly blend things out. I used that on my last video I put on YouTube um, when I was doing my son and his daughter with their, their flesh colors. And oh my goodness, it just really helped blend that out. And since we're talking a little bit about paper, the paper I'm using, it's a pretty thick paper. It's a Strathmore 
this pad, sorry, gosh, let me pull back. Gosh, I'm sorry, guys. This is a toned gray mixed media, but it's the exact same paper that I'm using, except this is toned tan. I just don't have the cover for this one because I split my supplies <laughs> between my north and south house, and that's a whole other story. We'll get into that later, but um, it's a mixed media. Um, it's very thick and... Uh, nice and stable, sturdy, takes color fairly well. It's not my favorite, but I like it um, just because if I want to already have a background, it already gives me that background. You can tell I've taken some tan and put it in this pad, but this is mostly gray. Anyway, Strathmore Mixed Media. Um, it's not bad. This is a 9 by 12 <clears throat> Okay, so you can see, let me get this. So blending, I will come back through and blend it. I, I could go back through and try to finish it as I go, but I kind of want to do the whole thing to figure out, okay, am I going to go ahead and actually put white in this or am I just going to let the paper be the lightest part? Will it make sense? I don't know. I do like the fact that I can just go really lightly in these areas and let the paper show through. I don't have to put color down and that gives me my contrast. I like that. A lot of this that you're seeing here that I've come back, that's from an eraser. When you're drawing, this is not your only tool. You erasers are a godsend. And oh my goodness, like, let's see, let's pull, Oh, in here just a little bit like what I just drew you see the area I just drew well if you look at on the photo there's other little things happening here that are on top and I can take care of those now I can take care of those later but see how easy it is for me to just add another see how that how I, how I can make that fur just Look at that. Isn't that cool? So and that's an eraser. That's knowing where to pull that color back off. That already looks more like fur right there. And then if you do go in with a blender, I'll go ahead and do a blender right now. Just forgive me for the shaking. See if I can find a place where you can tell that this is really blending. You have to have some color down first, but you can tell it's getting a little smoother. You see that? The difference between the shadow and the medium tones is smoothing out. Isn't that cool? And then to get some of these hairs in here, I can go back in with, voila, my eraser. And I can pull some of those shadows back, or some of the white hairs back to the surface because they're closer to the surface. They're coming out and now look, I've made some dimension there. And then I can go back in, a little bit more shadow, make more dimension. What makes sense? What would make sense? There'd be a little, it'd be very deep there. And then as it comes out, it's a little lighter, so I release the pressure. You see how I can make that look more like fur? Just, I'm not going in and drawing every hair. I'm just defining some shadows in there. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I just love it. I just love drawing. <laughs> and I think I didn't start this up until what? Two, two years ago, two and a half years ago. I'm 59 now. Why, oh, why didn't I draw more when I was younger? But, you know, that's all fine. It's all good. There was a reason for everything. I don't think I would have had the patience, to be totally honest with you. I'm not sure I would have had the patience to... sit and work on this but as you get older you realize 
uh, you don't have to be in a hurry. Do not have to be in a huge hurry. I'm not liking the shape of that whisker. It's too straight. I want it to be more curved. So I'm kind of coloring in and getting the background behind it. And then I will come back in. I'll show you my other little, my other favorite tool that I've got. <laughs> I'm doing this for two and a half years and I have learned about fun tools, I'm telling you, and they're not expensive. Not expensive at all. It's awesome. Um, oh, I don't know if you heard that. This is my... Um, electric eraser battery well it's no it's it's battery operated I guess it's got a rechargeable I I recharge it um, this thing is so cool they've they've got different attachments that you can put in the end I've got the smaller eraser attachment on here and it's just like Here's like my Tombow mon mono eraser is what I was using earlier. This is that on steroids, <laughs> different brand. But the thing to remember when you use one of these is if you've used it before, to take it on some other piece of paper and just run it and make sure there's no leftover color or anything that's gonna mar your paper. <clears throat> and see how that's more, it's just more rounded. I just wanna make it more rounded. Let's just pray I can do this. There. Then I can come back in if I like that shape better. I can definitely come back in with color to make it thinner. Because of course his whisker is not that fat. See how easy that is? And then, of course, this leaves little eraser bits that if you have a little brush. This brush came with this eraser, I believe. And I just use it to brush off little bits. Okay. So anyway. Let's see. Go back in here and darken that up. There's some layers under there. There's layers even in the dark that you can come back in and darken it. This little guy, I'm just gonna give him. The thing to remember when you're drawing is you don't have to press really hard, especially not at first. See, oh, I like that much better. You do not have to press really hard. You can always go back and layer. Look how fun that is. I think what I'm gonna do on this area, this is, this area here is a lighter area. Some dark bits in there. I think I want to blend it a little bit and in order to blend it in I've got to have enough color down there for the to blend right so I'm gonna lay a little bit more color down because as I've shown you we can take color up if we want to we can take some color up Take my blending pencil. Just blend it. Blend it all together. Don't let it scare you. <laughs> it's all okay. 
this, you don't have to be as careful. You're just blending. You're not laying any more color down. You're smoothing down the color that you've already placed. And you're allowing it to, as long as you haven't pressed, you don't press too hard. And as long as you haven't laid a ton of pigment down, you'll be able to put more color on top after you blend it. And you see people just making these incredibly lifelike drawings. Unless they're, you know, abstract, which that's so cool. Very loose and abstract, and you, you can just see what people are hinting at just by the way they've placed their brush and swirled their color. And I just, I have so much admiration for people like that. Um, It's because people, realistic drawings happen with patience and layering. Which is why I said, I don't think I could have been doing this when I was younger. I just did not have patience. I had places to go, people to see, a family to raise, a business to run. And to what? Take time to just sit and draw? Are you kidding me? So if you're young and you have time to do this, oh my goodness, I just think it's wonderful. Um, and maybe if I would have went to art school and you know pursued that part of it, maybe, I don't know, maybe things would have been different. But I, I did enjoy my graphic design. I had wonderful employees, I had wonderful networking partners that were just amazing. I got to interact with so many people. Um, I love helping people. I guess so if there was any way when I was running my business, if I could help them in any way, I just love that. Look at his cute little expression. Oh my gosh. He's just adorable. Sue Cross, you are amazing. You are amazing. Now see how much softer that is? I'm hoping you can tell the difference. I am so sorry that this is shaking like this. Oh my goodness. You guys are probably going crazy. What is she doing? Stop. Okay. So that's a good a good first layer and now what I can do that I've got this kind of all smoothed out I can go back in with my pencil and deepen lines even more see how it's taking color now since I burnished it down a little bit it's gonna take a little bit more dark color now which is awesome and I can look at, okay, where on his fur? There'll be some deeper shadows here. I know I need a deeper shadow here under his chin. And he has black fur under there too, which is why I'm so tempted to just also add black to this drawing. I might, I just don't know. Maybe, we'll see. I think that would be cute, but then it's kind of cool just to have a duotone. But see, now I can come back in and add some of these darks in the bottom. Cool. Say, okay, there's a little bit of dark patch in here. Dark patches in here because, you know, this is a, this bunny just took a bath. His fur is everywhere. I'm going to brush away. Got a little bit of a bit there. Something to remember though when you're drawing is don't take your hand over your drawing very much. And I technically, since I know I'm not going to draw out here, I'm, he's going to be isolated. I know I can keep my hand here and it's going to be okay. But if I were going to put a background down, um, anywhere where you lay your hand on your drawing when you draw, you've got oils in your hand. 
and that can actually affect how the paper will take your your uh, pencil, how it will take the medium. So a lot of people work, I've worked with tracing paper, a lot of people just have a tissue. Um, I've got these Chemtech, oh look what I did. I've got these Chemtech science wipes that they're just thin pieces of paper or tissue. And you lay that down, look what I did. Look, see what I did? When I was showing you the Chemtech box, my pencil hit the board. <laughs> so we are going to get out the good old trusty battery eraser. Okay, this comes up. Always be careful. Hazards of the uh, trying to video and show people things. <laughs> oh shoot. See, it happens to everybody, folks. It happens to everybody. Oh, I should be able to get that up. Yeah, it's it's gonna come up. It might take me a second, hot second to get that up. But it will, it'll at least be gone enough that it'll look like um, some of the grain of the paper in the background. I'm not gonna let that bother me. It's gonna be fine. Um, this is a kneaded eraser. Um, these are great for picking up. Like when I go through down here, if there's these light areas, and I know I'm going to put, be putting white down, I'll just come in with this kneaded eraser and pull up some of that color. It'll come right up. Kneaded eraser is your friend. So, okay. Go back over a little bit. Don't want to overwork the paper because that will show too. So, that's what I get for not putting my pencil down. Okay. I'll keep working on it just every once in a while. Give it a swipe and we'll get that pigment up. See, it happens to everyone. At the very least, I can take my pencil and just do a, a random <laughs> a random swipe here and there to make it look like it's on purpose. Maybe that's where I'll put a water droplet. There I go. That's what I can do. Okay. I cannot tell you folks how many times I have thought I've ruined a piece and I'm like, oh, I got to throw it out. And... It's, I, I mean, I've been ready to wad up a piece and throw it in the trash, but I keep working at it, and guess what? It gets salvaged. I think there's probably a point in every single drawing I've done where I felt that way. Um, so I'm not going to make this much longer. It's already getting on to about 43 minutes or so, and I know this can be long for people. I will stop this one pretty soon. I just want to, now, now I'm all nervous. I just want to show you how now that I've burnished that down, I can take this little Tombow mono eraser and without having to add a lighter color on top, what I, I'm getting those light hairs by just removing pigment. So there's more than one way to draw a bunny. <laughs> Just give him all kinds of little hairs because he's fuzzy. And I'm looking at my reference photo, but I'm not like married to it anymore as much. I, I know I've got some darker shadows in certain places but I am not trying to mimic where every single little hair is. I, that would be, that would be crazy. So hopefully that gives you guys some ideas of how to start laying down color, um, how I got the tracing on the page to begin with. And, um, trying something different. I mean, I could have actually done this as a drawing and 
um, not just used one color. I could have used several different colors. Um, and you'll see as I, um, if I keep doing this, you'll see that I do most of mine are several different colors. This is kind of just something I've uh, decided to do because I'd never done it before. But there is always a different way. That's the beauty about art. There's just always a cool and different way to express yourself, to find that creativity, um, to make it yours. Um, I truly believe God gives us a desire to be creative because he's so creative. And I think he takes pleasure when we are creative too. Especially when we're enjoying his creation so much. And by enjoying his creation, just sharing our love for it. So anyway... I'll keep playing with this guy. I'll, I'll probably do some more videos. Um, try to post links in the description below for some of the tools I mentioned, um, some of the supplies I've mentioned. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I uh, hope you join back again very soon as we work on our little Sucross wet hair. <laughs>